Greetings! Today we're going to talk about push buttons and how they work and how we would wire them up. So this is the electrical symbol for push buttons. Basically, you can think of a push button as a momentary switch that makes or breaks an electrical contact. There are normally open buttons, which essentially complete the circuit when you push down. This is what we have. So the circuit is open when you close the circuit uh, by pushing the button. There are, however, also normally closed buttons, which work in the exact opposite way. These are fine and useful in certain cases. Uh, they don't in, are not included in our kit, just to avoid confusion. So this is our tiny uh, push button. They come in different sizes, but you can generally see the shape of it. Looks like a button. You're going to have four pins, and they are designed specifically to cross the channel uh, in the center of our breadboard. What I want you to notice in this picture is that it looks a little confusing at first because there's obviously four, four pins, four legs, if you will. Uh, so you have to figure out how to orient it. But if you look at the diagram, you can see that the pins are in this particular orientation on the top and the bottom. Basically, they go across the, the channel. So you don't want to rotate it. You can kind of see the orientation. Now, this is how a normally open button works. Okay. So again, through the center of this button, uh, a horizontal center, we would have the channel of the breadboard. So the pins on the left, the purple pins, the magenta pins, those are always connected. So you don't do anything, those pins are connected. The blue pins on the right, those are also always connected, but separately. So you have these two sets of two pins which are always connected, normally connected, normally open. So as again, just illustrating this in the same way, um, another way of talking about it, the, the pins across uh, in this picture are vertically are connected. When you push the button, what's going to happen is all four pins across the entire button are now electrically connected. What this means is that you have bridged the circuit in this diagram from the right to the left, and therefore you can turn a light on or send a signal to the microcontroller, whatever it is you need. Now, what I want to take for a moment is to explain why we wire the button this way. I think it's important to understand uh, both how you wire a button and a little bit about why we would do this. So um, we're going to go through uh, three versions of wiring a button, and the third one is the one that we're going to use. So our goal is that when we push the button, you should send an on-off signal, a 0 or 1, a binary. For us, this is going to be a 3.3 volt and a ground. That's how we're going to send the signal. So the simplest way you might think to wire is kind of like this picture. So in this picture, we have a ground wire connected to the right top of the button. And we have an input pin connected to the argon in the top left. So you would imagine that when you push the button, the argon pin is connected the ground, and it would send a ground signal, or read a, read a ground value on the, on the argon. It might be an assumption. There's a couple of problems with this approach. Uh, well, first of all, when the button's pressed, we would get ground, so that's good. That solves one problem we want. Problem is, when the button is not pressed, is it high or is it low? We don't actually know. And this is called floating input. So when you have a digital value that's not exactly 0 and not exactly 3.3, .3, we say that it's floating. Now, in practice, uh, you know, half a volt might still be considered 0, and 2.9 volts could be considered high. So it's not exactly that value. But you understand that it's, it's pretty close, essentially. There's a, there's a cutoff. So we're looking at something in between those. Well, what if we get closer into the middle? 2.4, right? So I said maybe, you know, 2.9, maybe 3.1 would technically be considered high. Okay, fair enough. What about 2.4? What about 2? 1.8? What if we're right in the middle? What, what would that be? So we have a way to fix this problem, okay? So intuitively, look at what we did. We added a power connector. So now, when the button is not pressed, when it's open, you can see that the red power wire would be connected, again, because these are connected 
vertically across, so the white input pin, the wire is connected to the power. So now we've kind of solved the problem, right? We've got 3.3 uh, volts when the button is not pressed and ground when the button is pressed. Now there's a more dangerous problem with this circuit. When the button is open, we have high. When the button is pressed, what we have now done is connected power to ground. This is very, very bad. In electronics, this is it's probably the worst thing we could do. Um, because what's going to happen is, going back here for a moment, if we have power to ground, there's going to be a significant amount of current. The current that's coming from the wall, for example, is going to travel through your board and through the argon. And you're going to likely damage the, the board, damage the button possibly, and damage the argon. So there's too much current flowing directly from power to ground. So all of that to say, here is the way that we wire a button. Essentially, we use what's called a pull-up resistor. So you can see in this picture, there is a brown, black, orange, gold, or a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And what we've done is we have connected it between the power line and the pin of the button. So what this pull-up resistor does is whenever the button is connected to 3.3, uh, is open, we're going to get a high signal. Now, we say that it's pull up. All that means is it's connected to power, so it's the resistor is pulling up the, uh, the signal to power. Now, here's where we solve the problem. When the button is pressed, the input goes to low, which is what we wanted. It goes to ground, except instead of having a short circuit, basically a wire from power to ground, we now have a very large resistor between power and ground, the 10K. So as current flows through, it's not um, uh, fully unobstructed current that could damage your board. So this is essentially the way that we've solved this problem, is we add in a resistor, and there, we, and there we go. This is very, very, very important. Anytime you use a button, you must always use a pulled-up resistor. It's, it's really critical. If you don't do that, it's very likely that you're going to damage the argon or whatever microcontroller you might be working with, or possibly um, possibly your board. So keep this in mind when you're wiring. We have one side of the button connected to power with a 10K resistor. The opposite side of the button is going to be connected to ground. And then typically, on the uh, pin that's wired to power, that's going to be the pin that goes to the input for the argon. Now, if you've done experience, have experience with this before, you know that there's also a way to use a pull down resistor, or there's ways to use different pin modes on the argon. Those are all valid. We're just covering kind of the simplest, um, easiest way to think about the wiring. So we're going to use a 10k pull up resistor. 